Hosanna to the Son of David. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We are celebrating the Lord's entrance into Jerusalem. After having prepared ourselves for 40 days with fasting, with prayer, and with good deeds, we are now once again standing at the entrance gate to the Holy Week. And the Holy Week starts at the gates of Jerusalem, the Holy City. We have olive twigs in our hands, olive branches, as a sign basically of the starting point. Jesus in Bethphage, in Bethania, up the Mount of Olives, is waiting until the people come to make his entrance beautiful. And you have come in this morning hour to make the entrance of our Lord beautiful, to praise Him and to glorify Him. So let us sing the Hosanna. Blessed is He who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches. That we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 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 in the highest. The Lord be with you. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They answered them, Just as Jesus has told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, 
and others spread leafy branches, and they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Dear sisters and brothers, like the crowds who acclaim deeds in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, Amen. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna ring. You are the King of Israel, and David's royal son. Now in the Lord's name coming, the King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, reading the King, to whom the lips of children Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who was an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a one that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back, I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like fleet knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response to the psalm. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me, 
They mock me with parted lips. They wag their hands. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I, count, I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my virtue they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me, O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she's, she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them 
whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out, and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one for whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated, and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from it. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. 
he came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood nearby drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witness? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. 
Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murders during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his customs. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him. Pilate asked them. Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And then began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him on out to crucify him. They compelled they compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes amongst them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him amongst themselves and saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he preached his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and younger of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, laid it in a tomb that has been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Two days we entered today, Jerusalem together with Christ. Because if some of you have been to the holy city of Jerusalem, you know that the way of entering the city on Palm Sunday, from the Mount of Olives down to the city and the Via Dolorosa are the same way. We start with Hosanna this Holy Week and we will end the Holy Week with the grand Hallelujah, the great Hallel. But in between these two songs of praise, the Crucify Him is set. So yes, all the events that we are going to celebrate in the next days are combined, are intertwined, are linked together, and we cannot understand one without the others. And especially the solemn and glorious entrance into Jerusalem on the day that we are used to call Palm Sunday. Yes, they proclaim he is the king. They sing Hosanna to the son of David, and he is riding on a called on a young donkey as the king of peace would have done. David enters Jerusalem on a donkey to show that he comes as the king of peace and Jesus does the same. But his kingship is different than all the kingships that we have seen before or seen after and ever will see in this world. And even if our king here in Jordan is good and merciful and has the good of all in his focus, the kingship of Christ is better, is more glorious, more merciful, more self-sacrificing. Yes, the first entrance into Jerusalem of today is with all glory and all splendor that the people can imagine. And sometimes I think this must have been orchestrated. It's not happening like this, that a mob has 
palm, twigs or olive branches in the hands. It must have been orchestrated. Someone wanted to show, yes, Jesus is coming. And it was clear that he would come. He was there in all the feasts. We have heard it in the last weeks, how he came to the other feast of the Jews to the city as a pilgrim, as a teacher, as a prophet. Now he comes as a king. But again, not the king of worldly reign, but the king of the universe. The king that shows how leadership really works. The king that shows us that serving is the real way of governing. And then, the other entrance into the holy city, he will enter as the lamb that shall be sacrificed. So yes, dearly beloved brothers and sisters, we have prayed and sung the hymn of the Hosanna and we have heard the mob crying, crucify him. For the disciples this must have been difficult, up down, up, down, a roller coaster of emotions, and they break together, all of them, except John and the women. They have a stronger, deeper resilience than the others. They can go through this yes, no, yes, no, king, lamb, they can go through it, and they can be with him. The others not. So this can be one point of meditation, of prayer during this week, to see how do we react. Very high in the emotions, very low. What does this with us? Especially in a time like ours, when we are living under this constant tension of the pandemic. And when you ask me what's the difference between Peter and, and um, Matthew and Jacob and the other Jacob and Andrew that all flee and John and the women I think the difference is the love. Yes, Peter and the other disciples, of course they love Jesus. But they follow him also with a different motive. They want the Hosanna. They want the Hallelujah. They want the big events. They want to be with him. They want to have something of his glory. And this Desire to take part in the glory is somehow more important than the love and the desire to be with him in whatever happens. John and the women, they are strong in that. We have seen it with Mary Magdalene or with Mary, the sister of, of Martha. The Gospels are not 100% sure who it was who came to him and, and destroyed this, this jar of, of ointment and ointed him the feet. But there was so much love, so much desire to be with him in whatever happens. Yes, in the brilliant events, but also in the boring tension of there's nothing to do. And finally, even in the suffering. Yes.
Yes, there are many entrances into the holy city in many different emotions. And yes, every day of our lives is in this perspective an entrance into the holy city. Let us try to be in whatever situation we are, always with Jesus. Let us try to have this desire of John and, and the women and especially Mary, his mother, to be with him in joy and in sadness, with all our hopes and all our anxieties. Because, as so often, it is not only we who follow Jesus to Jerusalem, but it also He Himself, who wants to enter today not only into the city of Jerusalem, but also into the city of our hearts. And He wants to share our lives, our ups and downs, our hosannas, our crucify Him, so that in the end we also can partake in the Hallelujah, the song of the Resurrection. But until then, it is still a week. The last week of his life, the Holy Week. Let us make of this Holy Week a week of redemption, a week of holiness, a week where everything we do, our hosannas, our hallelujahs, our crucify him, and even our silence, may be directed towards God's greater glory. Everything. At maiorem Dei Gloria. Everything to the greater glory of God. Let us now confess our faith in the triune God who loves us so much that he gave his life for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, recognizing the suffering of all humanity at this time, let us join our prayers to Christ's sacrifice on the cross for the good of the whole Church, the swift end to this pandemic, and the needs of all who suffer. Let our response be, 
Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. For the church, living sign of the power of the cross over sin and evil, for all the clergy who will lead us through the celebrations of the Lord's Passion, Death and Resurrection this week, and for the elect in their final week of preparation for baptism. From the Lord, let us seek mercy. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. For all people who suffer the passion of Christ in the world today, for the poor, the unemployed, the persecuted, and all children, and for the sick, those undergoing treatment and the dying. From the Lord, let us seek mercy. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. For peace in a world addicted to violence, for an end to retribution and vengeance between people and nations, and for greater solidarity with all our sisters and brothers in the third world. From the Lord, let us seek mercy. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for those who have died recently, and for all who mourn, from the Lord, let us seek Mercy. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. O God of eternal glory, who anointed your Son as the suffering servant to raise up the fallen, grant in your mercy that by the sharing in his passion and resurrection we may share his mission to obedience to your will and rejoice in the victorious signs of his cross, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Ubi caritas est vera, est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est. The love of Christ joins us together, let us rejoice in him and in our love and care for all. Now love God in return. O caritas, est vera, est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est. May we who gather at this table to share the bread of life become a sacrament of love. Your healing touch, O Christ, Ubi caritas est vera, est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est. Ubi caritas est vera, est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est. Pray.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, you may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just, it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for though innocent he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty, his death washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. O holy, O holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full are full of your glory. O Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is the bo my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Pierre Battista, our Patriarch, William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Jesus, remember me, the body of Christ, when you, the body of Christ, to your kingdom. The body of Christ, the body of Christ. The body of Christ coming to you. The body of Christ. Jesus. The body of Christ. Remember me. The body of Christ. Jesus, your friend, he blesses you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. Jesus, remember me. The body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech your Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here with us and praying and celebrating Palm Sunday already in this early hour. Thank you also the viewers of Nursat English for joining into this celebration. Let us now ask for God's blessing for ourselves, for the people we have prayed for, for the people who need this blessing the most in these difficult days, and for the city and the country we are living in, for a man and for Jordan. The Lord be with you. And Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lived and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of the Almighty and merciful God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you for ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Were you there? Crucify my Lord. Were you there when they crucify my Lord? Oh. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed the tree. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. Dream.